So anyway, let's let's get into some of the moves that were made here. Uh, first one that I have on this list: Watkins, Sammy Watkins, going to the Chiefs. Talk about a deep threat. Talk about two deep threats now on that team, right? And Patrick Mahomes, who uh, was a deep, who can throw the ball, ball. Thrower, got the yep. cannon. I, I mean, it's going to be an exciting offense. I, for me, this is a, a a W for the Chiefs. I think it's a giant L for the Rams. And the Rams have been giant doing L? the right things. Giant L. It's a they give up a second round pick for this dude. And for, they let him walk after one year. From that point, but they're yeah, also chilling. I feel, I feel like. giant L. Yeah, I mean, in that case, yeah. But yo, if you give out a second round pick for someone, yeah, you're expecting them to come back. And yo, know, you know, he, he's coming he, off injury. He's also was their fourth option on that team offensively. That's true. Right? Yeah, Gurley, Robert he Woods. Who last much. year, this time last year, I shitted on. I yeah. said that like I thought he was gonna be trash. And then Cooper, Cooper Cup. Cup. Yeah. Cooper Cup. So. I think Watkins was, yeah, like the fourth option there. You know, I'm off him as a wide receiver when I first heard this. I'm not a fan of Watkins. And then I realized he's 24. Yep. Right? Matt is, Young. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I, if you look at it from that aspect, that this kid's still young. And he's like he's nice when he's able to play. Mm-hmm. He does have a lot of injury stuff. But my one biggest issue is in Buffalo, we defended him because he didn't have a quarterback. And then last year, he had a quarterback. Jared Goff balled out. And McVay's mm. a bright mind. And he didn't really was... Jared Goff was also getting uh, used to other yeah. receivers. I and then just... I feel like this could be a good fit with him. I think we're going to see what Sammy Watkins is going to be for the rest of his career when he's in Kansas City because there's not much else there. You have a gadget player in... Uh, Tyreek Tyree Hill? Hill. I was, was going to say I, Taylor Hill. The fuck? Much? You think there's Bro, not there's much? Bro, there's a lot there. No, 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 but I'm saying like, no, but I'm saying like at the wide receiver, like deep threat position, like who... It's Tyreek Hill and Tyreek Watkins. Hill is more of like a gadget guy, like behind the line of scrimmage, give me the ball, like off the line and shit. It's not like a deep threat, deep post kind of guy. Yes, he is. He, I don't he know. does a he little is. bit. Of, he could do a little bit of both. No, nah, but, I'm saying, but like, I feel how you're looking at it. Yeah. He's a different receiver than Tyreek yeah, Hill, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like he's without a, a doubt. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Like, doubt, yeah. there's no one on the team to take away from that. True. With Jared, with, with in uh, St. Louis, you had St. Louis. The Rams in LA. You had you had fucking Robert Woods and shit like. Uh, Jared Goff was getting used to like these certain guys, and then he came in. So it's like I can see how he was taking a while to get acclimated yeah, or whatever. But I, I don't think that's that's fair because Robert Woods was there for one year too, and Cooper Cup was a rookie. So they all were at the same playing field. Mm-hmm. Maybe Gurley had the advantage because he was there the year before, but everybody was there for the first time with Goff. Yeah, I guess Be- so. Best part about this is that Watkins is going to be the fourth option on this team. It's going to be yep. Tyreek Hill. His role won't change, yeah. Hunt. It's going to be Kelsey. <laughs> Right, and now you know he, it didn't work out in L.A., but that he was probably being used incorrectly in L.A. Now you got Andy Reid, who loves spreading the field when he can, loves throwing. If he could, he could would throw the ball sixty-five times and run zero times. So mm. I think it's a I think it's a good deal uh, for Watkins and the Chiefs, and I think the Rams kind of got asked out on this, but I, I really like that the Rams offseason. Besides that, honestly, yeah. All right, uh, another one we have here is uh, Robinson going to Chicago. Mm, Allen Robinson. To me, it's Good. like whatever. I, I, what? I like it. I Why? like it because young, I hate fucking what's yo, his name, Mitch. Mitch. Trubisky, young quarterback. You need a big body receiver, a possession receiver. Uh, you know, a safety blanket. I think that's what he is there. I don't know. I, you think it's a safety blanket? I mean, you, think you, about, you need a big body. Think about Allen Robinson before his prime. Like, I mean, in his two years ago when he had his best season, the reason why he's so good is because he's fast and big. They haven't had someone like that since Alshon Jeffrey and. and Kevin White was supposed to be that guy. He's Joey's, Joey's boy, guy. Yeah. Right? It's my guy. So you got Allen Robinson, who's like the prototypical possession receiver. On the other side, they signed Taylor Gabriel, who is going to be the speed guy. Right? And then you got Tyreek Cohen and Jordan Howard in the backfield. And then you got Trey Burton at tight end, which we're going to talk about a little later, I think. That's a nice plethora of weapons for a young quarterback who, honestly, Jeff Fox held him back last John year. John Fox. John Fox. Jeff Fox. <laughs> Jeff- <laughs> Typical <laughs> Shout out Jeff Fox. Jeff Fox. 32 on Jeff, on, Jeff Fox worthy. Uh, not that he's one of our who's Jeff fan. Fox? No, <laughs> no. Jeff Jeff Fox on Twitter? He's always tweeting us. Maybe, oh, maybe. Yeah, I guess. Was so. it Matthew Fox? I don't know. Regardless. I got my foxes confused. Anyway, yeah, he fucked up. Um, any fox except Fox News. Anyway, so you, you got. <laughs> <laughs> so you get. So I don't. So you got all these weapons and and John Fox held him back. So let him air it out a little bit. Let's see. I'm not sold on Trubisky sucks yet. I don't. I don't know how anyone can be. And now head coach of the Bears is Nagy. Nagy. Right, Maggie, yeah. Uh, Andy Reid's a disciple. Yeah, right. West Coast o- offense, offensive mind. Hey, at the end of the day, Chicago win for them. Allen Robinson, good player. 
I'm just not sold on like, oh, this is going to be the reason. Yeah, like we win Jag- games. The now. Jaguars made it to the AFC title game, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. With yes. with Keelan Cole. Uh, without boy, him. With, with, yeah, without him. What's, uh, Mickens, whoever the fuck that is. Shout out Didi. Shout out Didi Westbrook. Didi the, the truth. But, you know. Marquis, but uh, listen, they but, got there without him. Sure, but that doesn't say anything That's not a bad slight about to him. him. No, 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 yeah. no I, it's it's just saying how deep the, the wide receiving with, core at, at in, in in Jacksonville is. But I'm saying like Robinson to Chicago. I'm the reason why I reacted the way I did because I'm kind of like, all right, whatever. Like I don't think this is gonna win them more games and shit. Like I think that it's lukewarm for you. If, no. it is. It's kind of like all right. They're obviously their wide receiving core got better. Allen Robinson, tremendous wide receiver. I just don't have faith in Mitch Trubisky. That's the only well, thing. Well, that's the thing they're also testing, too. Now sure. now they can't be an excuse that his number one receiver is Clay your boy Mer- Kevin White or Ke- Meredith. Cam, Cam Meredith. That guy's going to fix his, Clay, fix his calf Cam. or whatever the fuck that so is. So now you got him some weapons and you're doing it the right way. You're yeah. off, you you got a young quarterback. Let's, Why not? Do it not, the right way. The right we got to do not, it right. Let's not forget when we were sitting in this seat last year, we talked the same shit about Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz went and got an Alsha, uh, Allen Robinson-type guy in Alshon Jeffrey. To be his number one guy, Carson Wentz took that step forward. So don't give up on a guy because he had a poor system with poor weapons, with a poor coach, and a poor scheme. Don't give up on him just yet. I'm not ready to give up on him yet. No, I feel you on that. I, I've always harped on you need a offensive mind for a young QB. So they went into that. And Allen Robinson is boss's guy. Yeah. Yeah, he fucks it up. Shout out to yeah. boss. Boss is not here. For yeah. Sure. Probably should have said that. At, anyway, yo, you guys didn't even mention that I wasn't on the show last week. No, we week. did, like 50 Fuck minutes you. in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I missed that. I missed that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we have uh, Andrew Norwell going to the Jaguars. Good signing. Upgrading the offensive line. A uh, very good signing, I think. Yeah. yeah uh, he was an all pro last year. Yeah. Pain. I had a, uh, ready for this? Ready for this? I had a source uh, closer to the Giants say that he was ours. And then they just came out of nowhere and just up the, up the deal on him. And they offered him $13 million per year. And then he went down to Jacksonville. So. Panthers would have wanted to keep him, but they just gave Trey Turner big money and Matt Khalil big money. And so you can't, you know, give big money to three guys. Which is weird that you brought in guys that weren't a part of your organization. And this guy you actually drafted and groomed. And he's your own kind. Uh, he was actually undrafted out of Ohio State, but nonetheless brought him in. But yeah, yeah, yeah meaning the, yeah. First, the first team he played for was your team. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. And he's still young, so. No pun intended. This is kind of a changing of the guard. Eh? Eh? <laughs> it's a changing of the guard because... When, because <laughs> guards don't usually get paid, and guard and like the consensus is don't pay guards, don't take guards in the first round. But all of a sudden, you're seeing a lot of pressure come from up the middle in in this new day and age where guys like Aaron Donald and the entire Phillies front four, uh, Phillies, the entire Eagles <laughs> front four, and 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 these guys who are in the middle who can create pressure up the middle, guards need to get paid now. So, no, this is a changing of the guard here. Hmm. All right, I like that play on words. I mean, to yeah, help. Just, you know, I mean, I'm out here. I'm out here rhyming. I'm out here. Help out, fucking Fournette. That line could always use some help. True that. Uh, Case Keenum going to Denver. I like it. I mean, I think we'll see like what Case Keenum is is made of in Denver. Like, there's no like he had a great year with uh, the Vikings, but we'll see what happens when you have weapons like you know Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. I, these I, are good guys. I think the Vikings had wep- have I would, weapons. No, 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 no I'm saying, I'm, but yeah. what I'm saying yeah. is like Case Keenum, like for the most part, is not like this guy, like the the year he had. But let's see what he does. Like uh, now you're in a different system. It's like it's not the same year. We're starting a new. We're starting over. You still have weapons here in uh in in Denver. So let's see. Let's see what you can do. I think that if he is the Case Keenum of last year, like the Dem- Broncos are like pretty good. Shout out to Case Keenum getting two years, thirty six million dollars. I hey, think when that's, you play like that, yeah, that's what happens. Home run for him. Yeah, um, his agent was hype. MVP but every candidate though, halfway through the season, MVP. He was candidate. in the discussion. He was never the favorite, but yeah, he yeah. he had a great year last year. If you're Denver, I, I think you still probably should take a quarterback in the first round. And a lot of people are now talking about Paxton Lynch being a dud of a draft pick a couple of years ago in the first yeah, round. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but he was to their defense, he was kind of like a second round. Yeah, I think what twenty so. second? They drafted him twenty second. Yeah, no, yeah he was in the twenties. Yeah. I thought he was like first round guy, but like twenty nine. No, am I crazy? N- nah, I think he's closer to twenty than to thirty. Yeah, no. but regardless, I mean, home run for Case Keenum. I don't know how I feel about it. The guy was like you always say, Tim. He had the perfect the perfect year where he had the the great offensive coordinator. He played indoors. He didn't need to worry about harsh conditions. Now Denver's a tough place to play. Where's that big helmet? 
<laughs> Yo, 20, 22 TDs to seven interceptions last year, 3,500 yards. If he can duplicate that and put back-to-back seasons together like that, he's going to get paid somewhere, like how, real paid. How much better is – this is a conversation I had with Nick. How much better is Kirk Cousins than Case Keenum? Exponentially better. Really? Well, you I'll, think so? I, I think yes. we should have say I was going to bring let's that up when me. we got to Kirk. Yeah, I know. Wait, right. wait. Yeah, that's fair. Let's okay. 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 That's let's, a conversation for a few minutes on. from now then. Uh, Richburg to the 49ers. Go ahead. Uh, I mean <laughs> – <laughs> Look, he was hurt. He was hurt last year, but he's the one offensive lineman that's competent for the Giants, and they just let him walk. So I don't know what more to say to that. N- nice signing if you're the the Niners. You protect your franchise guy and Garoppolo, and you kind of got him on a cheap deal. I remember PFF last year going into the year, he was top five centers that they had him rated as, and now he just went over to San Francisco. So that's a great signing for them. I like Richburg. For, he was the one bright spot on a shitty offensive line for the last three years. Fun fact, I said that the 49ers were going to be a dynasty <laughs> this time last year on the NFL preview show, and you guys all laughed at me. It's coming. Well, it wasn't this time last year because the preview I show was I still will tell you to kind of like, all right, relax. Fine. In the offseason last year, I, I'll still tell you to relax. No, yo, it's coming. Why did you say Sh- that? Yeah, that's because like, I believe in Kyle Shanahan. And I said they're going to put it together, and they're going to find the quarterback somehow. When you say it's coming, like, what, what do you mean, though? Like They're about to run the league. They might win the West next year. Seattle is completely ha- had an entire culture shift. What, Seattle's the exodus of guys like Michael Bennett. That's a bar. And and these dudes. Th- this is not just them losing good defensive players. This is them completely going through an entire identity shift. Like they their identity has been inside the Legion of Boom for so long, and now the Legion of Boom is not there anymore. Yeah. So in Seattle's out, and then you got Bra- Bradford in Arizona, who you don't know what the hell he's bringing. The Niners are right there. Yeah. Five you didn't row. mention the team that won the division though last year. You see how interesting it gets? I didn't yeah. do that. That's yeah. I did it on purpose. You let me let me yeah, rock. Make himself look better. Let me Niners rock. won five in a row at the end of the season. Let me so. rock, though. Yeah, because they got their quarterback. I mean, the Rams are gonna obviously give him trouble. Uh Albert Wilson to Miami. Okay. So this should be good. Yeah, this is gonna be great because <laughs> our entire lives we're told that we should try to be the best we could be. We should try to strive for greatness is LeBron's hashtag. We should, you know, uh have our vitamins, be better uh, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, and then mediocre gets eight million dollars a year. And I, I might be, be I might be polite saying mediocre because Albert Wilson is you getting are being polite eight million dollars a year. When I saw that, that is horrible. You started taking reps. I went, no. I went straight to the park. <laughs> no, I, I just I, I just instead of doing ladders, he's doing ladders. Yeah, right? instead of doing twelve reps of the bench press, probably could do four now. You know why? Why be the best I could be? You know, just be <laughs> mediocre. Why be prepared when you do a podcast? Just show up and wing it. You know, uh, that is, it's unbelievable. And let's also factor in that Miami's three best players. You could say were Landry, Sue, and uh, Ajay going into last year. Yep. All three of them are not on the team anymore. And what do you have to show for it? Albert Wilson, baby. We get Tannehill back. This is going to sound crazy. Oh, if you're going to defend this, I'm leaving. I'm defending it. <laughs> oh, my but God. Really? For just this little bit. I'm not defending the signing. I'm defending the Dolphins' plan. All right? A lot of people are shitting on the Dolphins. They're saying, we don't understand what the Dolphins are doing. And I understand what they're, where they're coming from. I don't really understand it either. <sighs> Let's look at the guys that they're getting rid of, right? Sue, Landry. They just released Mike Pouncey, mm. right? These are guys who are uh, JHI they traded. These are all guys that had reputations for being bad character dudes. But you deal with it when they're also your best players, though. I think that what they're doing is they're trying to have a Landry culture. Landry was a bad character dude? Because he, 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 he was all the attention on himself at all times. He was the only one who he was, was like their best player, though, though. Obviously, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about it. I'm just saying Adam Gase clearly wants good character guys in the locker room. Uh, we've seen this work before. I don't know if bringing in Albert Wilson for eight million dollars a year is the answer definitely not Danny Amendola for another fucking ridiculous contract right that's not the answer either yeah. so I don't know if they're replacing the player the bad character players with good players but they're definitely getting rid of the bad character guys that's yo Amendola doing. and Wilson together are not half the receiver that Landry is mm-hmm. not half and Amendola crushed in, in the playoffs and he was Brady's go to guy at it'd one also point, be interesting to see how he does without Brady it's, yeah, it's also going to be interesting to see what he does in the Miami nightclubs. He's got a fun three years ahead of him. He's also got a Mr. hot Amendola. fucking. He's cuffed up. Yeah, and she's he's one not, of the elite. He's not. He's, he's not leaving the house. He's not leaving the condo. 
Yo, yeah. crazy. Mm. Olivia Colbo. And then you go to Miami, though. He's from... Yeah, so but a Miss Universe, though. Miss Universe. Like, that's... That's... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Do you know how yo. big the universe is? There's like... <laughs> there's like... Rock. There's like six Space Force. girls hotter than Miss Universe on the, stri- on the strip in Miami right now as we speak, I guarantee it. Literally, like, I have yelled at you for being stupid <laughs> many times. You're fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. That's We're not talking about part. an Instagram model. We're talking about a girl no. that was Miss Universe. Miss yeah. Universe. That's a different ball game. She's Literally. also intelligent. I'd let her shit on me is what I'm trying to say. Poop. Cosine. He w- Down. He's, Wilson's from Florida. <laughs> He's from Port St. Lucie. Shout out the Mets. Uh, uh, yeah. Port Grant to the Ravens. <laughs> oh, back to back. <laughs> back to oh. back. We got good ones. Yo, our friend Josh, we all know Josh, huge Redskin fan. And I've always said that if, if you could be honest with yourself about your team, you could be a very smart, intelligent fan. When he saw that contract, he just wrote LMFAO in all caps, individual text to each one. He said that's one of the worst contracts he's ever seen. And he signed with Baltimore, so, but he was a Redskin. And Josh saw him. And we all saw him, a number four, five receiver, punt returner, gunner. Yeah. Come on, man. GMs have to, these GMs must see something that or maybe else like, doesn't. Like, no, this I is the kind of signing that makes me, makes me really consider going back to school, getting a master's and becoming a GM because that's horrible. Yo, Sorry. He's not getting drafted in a Madden league in the video game. He's but not going to be on your fantasy team. Oh, he, he might if he's the number one receiver because you always want a number one receiver. But for the most part, awful signing. It's not like the Ravens didn't try. Like, the Ravens were that person that just asks everyone to the prom, and no one says yes, so you end up going with, like, <laughs> the, the girl or the guy that no one wants to go to, and you guys are just kind of... The good girl! You guys, are, you guys are just standing there like this the whole time? Sick. Yeah. Want to dance? And that's it? That's the that's that's it. John Brown, too. Shady, good signing for the Ravens, though. I think that if John Brown could stay healthy, which is a lot, because sickle cell anemia is not a joke. Uh... Uh, he he. That's a good signing. That's someone that I can see having success in in Baltimore, but is going to depend on his health. Mm. Uh, Kirk to Minnesota. <laughs> All right. So Tim. Yes. How much better is Kirk Cousins than Case Keenum? Head and sh- heads and shoulders above him. I also I I'll agree. Yeah. Okay. I, so my question, part two to that question, is Case Keenum. Had a very he had a great year last year. Yeah. So how much more could Kirk do off that great year? I, I I think you don't sign Kirk Cousins as an upgrade for for Case Keenum in weeks one through sixteen. You sign him for an upgrade over Keenum in the postseason, which think, he has no success in the postseason. I mean, he's only had one one game, right? Cousins, if I'm not mistaken. So I mean, that's it's a sm- very small sample sample size, but it's what he can do. Right, you can't compare the two years because you could even say that that Keenum had a better year than Cousins last year, but you got to look at what Cousins went through. Right, he had no wide receiver from the very beginning. His entire offensive line got injured. His entire backfield got injured. Mm-hmm. His best receiving tight end got injured. It was literally him and a bunch of IR guys around him. So, in terms of that, and he still had a good year, and he still, despite the fact that he was being pressured like crazy, he had a good year. So, I think that if you're talking about an upgrade over Keenum. If you're looking for a stats upgrade that's going to be ridiculous, like I don't, I would say 22 touchdowns and seven interceptions would be a bad year for Kirk Cousins. You think he's 15 million dollars a year better though? Yeah. Well, not 15 dollars a million a year better because Keenum got a 32, 32 for million 32, million. 32 no? Yeah. So it's like so what is that 15 now? annually? 15. So and then is he, Kirk just got th- three for 90 no? True, and it's all guaranteed. I do. I, I mean, you got to. In this league, you have to have a quarterback. You have to have an elite one, and I think Kirk Cousins has the ability to be an elite quarterback. Do you not think that that Kirk is that much better than? Keenum? I I just think I like, but you can't compare. Like I I like to look at like big picture, like longevity. Yeah, like you think that Keenum, like he had a good year, but, and you could even argue that the Vikings. I I mean, it's it's look, it's tough. It's tough. The Vikings had a great year, yes, but that the, I don't think that's their like potential. Like they played bad in a game mm. where you would rather have Kirk Cousins in that game than Case Keenum. They, uh, I, I, it, if Kirk plays the best that he plays, they're gonna have the same record as they did last year. But in that game, you'd rather have Kirk than Case, no? Yeah. So I I feel like we're being very harsh to Case Keenum because I don't think he played that bad in that AFC, NFC title game. Defense gave up. 17,000 yards to Nick Foles. Sure. So if they win that game, we think about this completely different. Yeah. If they win that game, Kirk Cousins a Jet. True. <laughs> Case Yo, doesn't man, go anywhere. I, th- my Wait, heart. you think so? Yeah. 
Because it was down to the it's Vikings. It's hard to get rid Jets. of it. Yeah, yeah. Until number 12 leaves New England, no quarterback's going to want to play in that division unless they get drafted. Uh, Having to play him twice a year and knowing that you're not going to win the division, the division nah. <laughs> I think number 12 has spited the Jets, the Bills, and the Dolphins in many, many ways. And that's also, I think, another reason. And, of course, he's going to be the oldest player to ever live. Yeah, he'll play until he's like 55. Yeah, of course. So, yo, the new uh, the new time, Tom versus time, time versus Tom thing, Giselle is like fed up. She's like, yo, we need to. Wait, she wants him to retire? Yeah, she's like pushing it. Apparently, Jay Feely, the old kicker, she like pulled him aside when he was doing an interview with Fox and was like, listen, you need to get him out the league. Wow. The word is, is that he's had a lot of concussions the last couple of years that he hasn't told anybody about. And Giselle obviously sees him every day and she knows about it. She got she's she's like afraid. She spilled the beans on that. Yeah, yeah. She's the one that that leaked it initially. Yeah, damn. The Jew, you got the T. You know you love football when you're like. Excuse me. You have the T. What does that mean? Like you've never heard of it? Like, oh, you know what I'm talking. You must. Know yeah, what I'm I heard about. you got the Jew. I was like, wait, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, too. I was like, I said you, Jew? Got the, you got the juice, and then oh, oh like, okay, yeah, okay. you got the Jew. I was yeah, like, I heard oh, Jew. Hold too. on. <laughs> you know you love football when you're like, yo, Giselle. Chill out. Back up. Yeah. She's like Miss Universe level elite. I'll be honest with you. Giselle? Here we go. Not as hot as Olivia Culpo. Well, let's be fair, though. There's like a 15-year difference, too. Prime Giselle was... (laughs) She's like 40. Too tall. I'm just saying. Too tall, you said. Uh, Burton to Chicago. Love it. Same. Tim, the floor is yours. Okay, so I, I talked about it. Burton's a great receiver. He's he's not going to be in in the tight end packages that require running run blocking. Uh, he's more of like a, a finesse tight end. Yeah, like not even like maybe a slot receiver that plays closer to the line. Mm. Spread. But, he's a spread. Yeah, he's yeah. a spread tight end. But threat. I like the I like the addition that he adds. I think that he was one of the more underrated players in the free agent market this year. One dimensional, sure, but he plays that one dimension mentioned very very well. I think that he's going to be really good. I really do. I think it's definitely an addition. Yeah. Every time Ertz <laughs> didn't, every time Ertz, well, you know what I mean. Ertz hasn't played the last couple of years. This kid stepped up, and there Fair hasn't right. been much. You wouldn't think there's much of a, a drop off. And Zach Ertz is top three tight ends in the league. We yeah. can say. And correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of times during uh, the year when Zach Ertz was out on plays and fades, you're like, "Hey, Trey Burton." Yeah, Always yeah. seems to Anytime. fill in. Yeah. He's, he's and he's cheap, so let's get him in there. Like you know what I mean? I think this is a good signing for Chicago. Um, oh, uh, also uh, going back to Nagy. Yeah, if he could replicate Travis Kelsey, kind of yeah. well, Kelsey's a lot more physical, but you got to think of the success that he's had with tight ends mm-hmm. now coming over to Chicago. At least yeah. the patterns are going to be the same. Yeah, got to figure. Uh, Nate Solder, that's Giants. The floor is yours. I'm down. Yeah, I mean, you, need, to upgrade you, the you line. needed it. You needed it for sure. Yeah. Uh, like I told you guys before, we st- we started recording. I didn't like that six seven months ago he wanted to retire, and now they just broke the bank for him. I'm also very hesitant anytime Belichick lets go of a guy with not much fight to it. That's also a red flag for me. But yo, they they've needed help. You know, send help. Like I always like to write mm. in the group chat when something goes wrong. They they need help and they got it. Hmm. When it comes to Solder. The Giants needed him at left tackle because now not only do they gain a left tackle, they also gain a right tackle. Eric Flowers' original position was right tackle. You got to say he's going to be better at right tackle. You could, it's hard to be worse than he was at left left tackle last year. Uh, but I mean, Solder got super overpaid. Like that's the highest left tackle contract in football right now. He got super overpaid. This is a guy who had one of his worst seasons of ever this year. Uh, he was mentioned a couple times as like a problem in New England. 50, 51 total pressures on the quarterback. That's fifth worst in the league amongst any left tackle. Um, but he is a great run blocker. The only problem is like he's he's run blocking for Jonathan Stewart and Orleans Darkwa. So uh, Jonathan Stewart. We're gonna, the Giants are going to have to do something there. Maybe a Saquon Barkley type move. So uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I think that the Solder contract is, is good for what they needed for the, the Giants. But I do think they overpaid by a lot. But that's what, that's what as Nick said, that's what free agency is. Yeah, that's is. what free agency is. And Everybody's left, overpaid. And tackles get paid. You know, yeah, but I Left mean, tackles. you're paying him more than Mike Marcus Peters and everyone. Like, I don't know. Marcus Peters is a corner. You sorry, mean Jason, uh, Peters. Jason Peters. Yeah, it's all right. We got two Tim I'm bombs. Back. Two Tim bombs on this one. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked it up. Uh, McKinnon. I wanted him on the Jets. Love this move, man. To yeah. San Fran. Love it. 
Are you kidding? I, I like McKinnon a lot. This has Devonta Freeman written all over it, yeah, bro. Yeah, Kyle Shanahan's going to have fun with him. So much fun. I, I would draft him in the second round of fantasy drafts last year. Next year, excuse me. Whoa. Whoa. I would. I am Can all I be in over that McKinnon. <laughs> yeah, I'm I would, I would like to be McKinnon. in that league. Because, no, he's going to have second round value, but if I'm picking the front of the... F- the front of the I'm getting him in the third round because no one's gonna no one's he, gonna value him the correct way. I'll say he's the late third round, yeah, sure. Like who's who's going to who's gonna take reps from him? Matt Breida? Matt Breida's gonna be the change isn't even the change of pace back. He does the same thing. Matt Breida's the breather back. It's gonna be McKinnon's backfield back there. And it's gonna be a lot of swing passes outside, a lot of Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman type stuff coming out of there. I love this move. I really do. I I think they overpaid for him. Yeah. The fact that he's the fourth most expensive running back now in football is kind of crazy, I think. Uh, Minnesota gave him up with no fight. Everyone knew that he was going to be gone because they're getting Dalvin Cook back. That's another weapon to that offense we got to remember, too. <sighs> Dalvin Cook went down. And if it, he should send some money to Dalvin Cook because if he didn't get hurt, I don't think his role would have been pay, yeah. what sure, it would have been. Sure. And this is a guy that was just a bona fide returner for the most part. And he was a real gadget player. And then once Dalvin Cook went down, that Murray and, and McKinnon one two was pretty solid. I think it's important to realize, too, that this guy was a quarterback in college. I was just going to say that. So he's he's learning the position while being able to play it. And for the first time ever when he was behind a good line last year, he played really well. He showed he, He's one of those spark score guys where he's just his athleticism is off the charts. I love the move for San Francisco. I, I love what's going on in San Francisco. That might be like my second favorite like shady team. Georgia Southern quarterback. That's so crazy. I also like what San Francisco's doing. Uh, Wilkerson to Green Bay. <laughs> Two years ago, I think it would have been fantastic. I think he's reached his peak as a player. <laughs> there, I don't know. There were rumblings that like... So he's from Jersey, right, Tim, if I'm not mistaken? He's from the East Coast. He's like... I'm, I'm almost positive. He went to Temple. I there were rumblings out of like the Jets that like he was hanging around with the wrong people, hanging out with his friends from back home. Like I don't really know too much into it, but let's go to Wisconsin. And, yeah, he's from Jersey. Yeah, so you know what? Let's get your ass in Wisconsin and and not worry about anything else. I need like outside issues, and maybe he'll turn it around. The only reason he got a contract in Green Bay is because Mike Penton is there. And Mike Pettin was his defensive coordinator when he was with the Jets. Mm-hmm. Is that that's, when he had his best years? That's when he had his best years under Rex Ryan. So, I mean, he still sees a guy who could be that pro bowler, who could be the guy that got the giant contract that he hijacked the Jets for. His his heart's not there. His motor's not there. Like, he has all the physical skills. He's one of the biggest, fastest guys in the NFL. He should be able to rush the quarterback at the pace that he did uh, the year that he got the contract. Instead, he took his foot off the gas. He got comfortable. He took the money, and he ran. And I don't want any part of that guy if I'm the if I'm the Packers. But then again, the Packers' defense is so bad. You need to, they need to do something like make a splash with a has been sort of dude that may have a comeback like Wilkerson. It's only five mil, three million with in incentives, so eight million total. So if he performs, he's going to get paid eight mil, and he'll deserve that eight mil if he if he performs. You know what I'm saying? So sure, we call that low yeah. low risk, high reward. Yeah. Interesting what Green Bay is doing. Green Bay is kind of going off Green Bay script. Graham, yeah, J- Jimmy's also next. Green Bay. Yeah, I love it for them. Um, he's not going to be a very effective in between the twenty yard line and the twenty yard line, but one of the better red th- red zone threats in the league last Will year. Will he not though? Maybe a lot of drops last year. Yeah, a lot of drops. Very a lot true. Of, a lot of bad drops. And yeah. and the issue I have with your red zone threat, like teams on average are in the red zone four to five times a game so you're only effective those four or five times a game right you know uh ryan Rosillo. i know impy listens to him all the time he talks about like when people talk about nba players and like is he a hall of famer he's like the quicker you get to him oh he won a gold medal the the less his argument is like the less his resume looks because a lot of people have gold medals especially if you're an american dude that ends up playing there and uh like jimmy graham if if you're Best argument is that he's a, a great red zone threat. Yeah, sure, but what are you to me inside the twenties? I don't think they need him inside the twenties. Like, but, but I also think that he has the ability to do that. And if you can do it anywhere, it's going to be in Green Bay, right? I yeah. I mean, the, the Packers historically don't know how to use the tight end, right? But yeah, but they also like what is it? Jared Cook and Martellus Bennett. No, well, well, Bennett this year was hurt, and then he had a lot saying, of. Who is Jared, was two years ago? Right, the, that's what I'm saying. Like you had these guys. It's J- like Jermichael Finley. Jimmy Finley. Graham is like, 
you know, a different kind of player than them. I think he's, you know, he's better than they are. He did take a step back last year. He's not the same guy he used to be when he was. Yeah, with but the I Saints. think if you can revive your career or whatever from the Jimmy Graham that we like knew, like when he first came onto the scene, you're kind of like, oh, okay, Jimmy fucking Graham. It's like, you know, a rod. Uh, I think the reason that you get Jimmy Graham is twice a game, you put him in motion on the goal line when you're on the five yard line, you go to the outside. You get to read if it's man coverage or not. And if it's man coverage, you don't waste any time. You don't drop rush. back three stops, jet steps, and you throw it to the 6-7 guy in the five ten corner. And you're going to score a touchdown, just like just like he did 10 times for the Seahawks. Not only that, though, that also provides another person on the offense that you have to game plan for. I True. Because like. sure. if you don't game Good plan point. for Jimmy Graham, he, he could kill you. Good point. It could happen, especially with that quarterback back there. Um, the Jets. Jermaine Johnson. Overpaid, but necessary. <laughs> I mean, look, he. I mean, what we paid fifteen mil a year for him. Yeah. On the op way, he's probably worth ten to twelve. You pay a little bit more in free agency, like we've been saying. Like, and the Jets have tons of cap space, and in the NFL, you have to spend your money. You can't like. It's not like the MLB where you can like just sit on dough. You have to spend it. So, I don't hate it. Big the- corner. Yeah, in a system like Todd Bowles' yep. system, you yep. need a good secondary. Yep. Now they have Jermaine Johnson, they have Marcus May, they have Jamal Adams. If you add a second corner, well, which could happen because of... Well, if they bring Morris Claiborne back, it would be another sure. like 6'2 corner. They'll have two over 6'2 corners on the on the outsides and then the two young safeties. I love the way that sounds. Uh, but yeah, a little overpaid. But. You, take, you take a look at maybe what's it still in free agency too. Honey Badger. Honey Badger has ties. So if you can bring him in, mm-hmm. that's that's a nice little backfield. I hope Honey Badger goes to the Jets because I think there's one team he's perfect for, Dallas. Mm. I think Dallas would be a dope fit for him. Yeah. And I hope he doesn't go to Dallas. Uh, Tremaine Johnson, he's dope, man. He's another guy underrated who started the bet on myself thing. He was franchised back-to-back years. Overpaid, yeah, sure, but I mean that's just how it is for you to get free agents, the best cornerback in free agency, and the Jets uh, desperately needed one. So I say that's a good move for the Jets. Can't shit on it much. I agree. Uh, also, Isaiah Crowell. Nick put it perfectly in the chat. It's Chris Ivory again. Chris Ivory all over. Two point Which I'm down. I also didn't know he was 25. Another thing, like Sammy Watkins. Crowell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Does he feel like he's 31? Like at least twenty nine. Right? Yeah, yeah. Twenty five. The dude, and, and I know that a lot of people, it's it's hard. It's hard these days to see the true nature of someone because it's so easy to say he busted fantasy wise, so therefore he sucks in real life. Mm. But despite the fact that he wasn't being used at all, like at all, I remember I I went on a a pod like in week eleven and I just ranted about how. Crowell had like 60 yards in the opening drive and then received one touch the rest of the game. Like, I ranted about it. And, I mean, that this is a guy who's averaging every single year of his career over four yards a carry. He has one year where he averaged 4.5 yards a carry. Last year, he averaged 4.2 yards a carry. He's a bruiser. He's a, he's a guy that fits the system. He's going to take pressure off the quarterback, whoever the quarterback is in New York. I like it. Cleveland said coming into this year, that, uh, well, last year, uh, that they were going to use him more because he was like killing, and they just didn't give him the ball because they were down. And but that didn't happen again. So maybe if the Jets can get out to some early leads, you'll see uh, an uptick in Crowell. It was. I game. do like him though. I but do. I'm not like you know. He's solid. Like yeah, he's I, I think that's guy. why I think if all goes well, he could do something like Chris Ivory. Didn't Chris Ivory finish like top five in rushing one year? Like his best year with the Jets, I think he was third in the league in rushing. Or am I bugging? No, you, I think you're thinking about Thomas Jones. Thomas Thomas Jones, Jones played very well for us. I think he might have been guy. third in the AFC. I remember. I, I do remember, I remember Chris, uh, Chris Ivory being like super nice for you guys. I don't think he ever went over a thousand for us, but I'll check that now. But he he played a key role for us because it was him and Bilal Powell as a change of pace backs. Now Bilal Powell's still there, and you got Joe McKnight too. Uh, not Joe McKnight. R.I.P. Who his yeah, uh, his yeah. killer got thirty years. Oh, thanks, bro. Thanks, appreciate that. What? That was my spitball. <laughs> oh, uh, well, you should mention what your th- oops. No. You should mention what your things are. Elijah McGuire. That's what I meant. Oh. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, Bridgewater. Two gloves. Yo. Also to the Jets. He might I- be the third string quarterback by the end of the year, though. 
I, I don't think start so. the season Yo, as the third string quarterback. I know you hate this. I know you. I'm sorry, but oh. he had over a thousand yards in 2015. Chris Ivory. Did he? Okay. Yeah, he was I'll, third I'll, in the AFC in, in rushing. I stand corrected. Yeah. Who, Listen, is, who is the guy you're talking about? I'm Bridgewater. Sorry. Bridgewater. Yo, I love the move. And look, I'd rather have Kirk Cousins. But if you're looking at the at the quarterback landscape outside of that, besides the rookies, like just the the free agents. He has the most untapped potential of them all. Fair. Like, he has the highest ceiling of anyone you're going to sign, maybe outside of Bradford. Yo, you like this movie, you said? I love it. How come when Boss was telling you a couple weeks ago that we might get Bridgewater? Because I didn't want Bridgewater because I wanted Cousins. Oh, okay. All right. But if Cousins fair, is fair. out, but Bridgewater's a good backup. But then we just signed McCown. That makes no sense to me. Like, yo, the guy was a good leader, and he cried on the stand <laughs> when he broke his thumb. I get it. I do. But what the fuck is he doing for you? What the fuck is well, bringing he had back a, good, a 35-year-old quarterback doing for the Jets? He had a good season. He did. But he's, what is that doing for us? He's going to he's gonna groom the guy you guys he, take at six. Yeah. Put, that's what he's going to do. Oh, no, no, no. There, we have to man. move up. Don't, oh, no. don't that, get that twisted. Listen, if that's, the case, if that's the case, if we got a guy yeah, like Yeah, he's Baker. a great locker room guy. Well-respected. The second he got signed, right. everyone hit Twitter. Welcome, yeah, welcome yeah. back. Welcome back. Everybody loves him. He's cool with being the starter or he's cool with being the backup in the room tutoring these guys. And that's why I like the signing. But if, if that's the case, I'm a, I'm a, I'm cool with it. No, for sure. Yeah. You want Baker Mayfield? I no, want him. No. Oh, I no. thought that's nah. What you were the twins, say. the Brodo twins, want Baker. They love Baker. Yeah. No. Really? Personally, uh, look, I don't think that Baker Mayfield is going to be a bust. I think that he has the potential to be good in the NFL. He could be a Drew Brees type. Who knows? Right? Except more mobile. But I don't want him on my team. I want him f- as far away from... I want to root from a distance. I want to root for him in fucking Oakland or wherever the fuck he's going to go. Like, somewhere as far away from New York as possible. You need thick skin to... to I make, want him to go to the London franchise, whatever that fucking comes. Need, I, I want to be from a distance. You need thick skin to make it in New York. You need a personality, in my opinion. Eli Manning, God bless his soul. I don't know how he did it. Right? Because Eli... So, Michael Strahan said it best. If Eli, like... Won the Super Bowl or, or lost a game, it's same the same face. reaction. Yeah. Same no, face. shucks. Yeah. <laughs> Another uh, pick. We'll so do. that's uh, sort damn. of unique to me, right? Like that. That's sort of very unique. But I think you need some, you know, hair on your chest. I think you need a personality to make it in the city, and I think he has that. And I think he wants to win, you know, better than anybody else. Truthfully, I really believe that. I think he has like, like that desire to win. Truthfully, I really do. Like hearing him talk, all that. Okay. He did really well. You're gonna laugh. Him speaking at the combine, he did a really good job. I just I just look at all these short white guys. <laughs> it sounds like Impy's planning for Baker Mayfield. I mean, if I see uh, all these short yeah. white quarterbacks that never make it, like these short white running guy quarterbacks that never ever make it. What do you mean? He's just another one. You were Manziel and, it's possible. and, and Crouch. Yeah. Well, what other ones? Yo, are you? Eric Crouch. That's, like how many other ones are there? You're That's making it guy. Like the re- Nebraska. There's two. Woo. Right, Julian Edelman. He had to t- transfer to wide receiver. And he's yeah, a beast. But he's, but he's nice. <laughs> yeah, he's All right, nice. maybe Baker Mayfield be a good wide receiver. Hey. And and Edelman slings. Slings. Nah, but I think he might be good. I just don't want him on my team. Yeah, I. Yeah. You heard it here first. I don't want Mayfield either. Baker. I feel you on that. Baker. I like that. You 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 root from afar. Yeah. All right, uh, Jordy going to Oakland. Can we talk about him getting cut first? And, and yeah, he got cut. And then from, signed with Oakland from Green Bay. Yes. All right. So they paid Devontae Adams last year, number one wide receiver money. And then if you're looking at it as a GM, you line up their years. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers going down. Devontae Adams and uh, what was the backup? Hundley. They, they had like a man crush on each other because Adams was catching 120 passes a game. Right. <laughs> so I think Nelson at this point of his career is no longer that home run threat he used to be. He hasn't looked the same from his ACL surgery. He's still solid and productive. I put that stat in the in the group chat when Rogers targets Nelson. It's like a 78%. I just pulled it up. You ready for yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. 470 of 705, almost 7,000 yards, 6,900 yards. 65 touchdowns, nine interceptions, 324 first downs, 123.9 passer rating for Rodgers when targeting Jordy Nelson. <sighs> yeah, that's just the Talk trust. Talk about in sync. That's that's the that's what uh Tom Brady <laughs> has with Edelman. That's what Rodgers has with well had with Nelson. Right. right? Nelson's double covered. He'll still throw it in a spot because you know Jordy will go get there. And yo, that's big. Uh, Rodgers came out and said like, yo, no one. What's good with no one talking to me? You guys got rid of my QB coach. You guys got rid of my number one 
wide receiver and my best friend because they're always they're they're like boys, you know, and that's his guy. And you saw how at the beginning of last year, Brady, we were wondering like, what's up with the Patriots' offense? And I came on here and I was like, Yo, Edelman's Edelman. not there. It's gone. Right? They're gonna be fine, but eventually they're gonna be fine. And eventually they were fine. And now with Rodgers, it's like, Yo, third and eight. Right? He got you eleven yards, and you knew that back shoulder shoot. They mm-hmm. made that play famous, like yep. that. You know how we talk about Randy Moss getting Moss, like the back shoulder. When you think about it, bam, Rodgers to Nelson. Yep. That, the bootleg. The bootleg also, point, the bootleg. and then bam, what's up? Just so on the same page. The bootleg. Do you guys post. like him in Oakland? I think that Jordy's future, and I don't have the stats. In front, I wish I had the stats in front of me. I, I dropped the ball on this one. He's really good out of the slot, and I think that mm. his future is a Larry Fitzgerald future. If he moves to the slot, yeah, great. Route Where he runner. can extend his career to a couple more he years. He could extend. I think that he could still be effective. But if you have him on the outside, he's lost that step. He's not fast anymore. Let's also face it. He's a white dude on the outside. Eventually, they all got to come inside. He's yeah. not as quick no more. And he had an ACL surgery. Come on now. You think he was he was he getting guarded by the number one corners on other teams? He was and, uh, up yeah. until like the second time they played the Vikings, and then they were like, "Yo, Xavier Rhodes, come on, just go." Take Adams, because also Adams was seeing 12 targets a game. And now, do you think he'll see the number two corner? I think Oakland, so. Right? I think Cooper, people, hey, I know I know. Tim isn't the biggest Cooper fan, but a he lot of people. Not at the end of the season, though, right? Yeah, he went off for every <laughs> two. Cool. Was hype. But, uh, yeah, I think that they'll still treat uh, Cooper as the number one there. Yeah, so, I don't know. It's interesting. Well, so I, I, I would like to see him come out of the slot. Crabtree also being released is interesting. Crab. What uh, team would you guys want to see Crabtree go to? Do you know what's funny? I think Dallas is the perfect place. I think he's the perfect replacement for Dez. If Dick, they why? Because Dez. he's where he wears a chain. <laughs> nah, I, Yo, I, I was gonna say I hope he goes to Seattle, Arizona, say, the Niners, what, just what to see him beefing with Talib again. True. <laughs> yo, that's that's chain the only snatcher, thing bro. where yo, I, I guarantee you. Yeah, tuck that nowadays. Come on, two in a row. Yeah. Yo, a, a, a network would get high ass ratings if they just put a camera on those two whenever they were on the field, like an exclusive channel just for that. They have to now at this point. Yo, it's it's hilarious. It, it's been going on for about three, four years. Now. I also don't understand the chain, like tuck it, bro. Or not wear it. it. I remember going uh, or not wear it. Yeah, Michael Crabtree's always been a a loud ass like yeah but character like, like but that. It makes Sorry, ass receiver. Like yo, Des like wears <laughs> big ass <laughs> earrings and shit. It's like yo, bars. you're on the football field, dog. Like, yeah, take it off. but he does exactly the same thing Des does. He's a red zone threat. He he he's runs a possession the, guy. He I think runs he's the field a lot better than uh, him. I was gonna say something crazy, but never mind. Word. Um. Anyway, Deion Lewis and Malcolm Butler to Tennessee. I think the Titans' plan is acquire the Patriots. Hey, if not a bad plan. <laughs> if you can't beat them, be them. Mm. Oh. Ooh. Now they have they got Logan Ryan, and Malcolm Butler at corner. They got Mike Vrabel at head coach. They got uh, more Patriots all over the place. Deion Lewis in the backfield, which is a great compliment to Derrick Henry. Deion Lewis in his entire career only has 324 carries, so you know he's going to be the third down receiving back, and Derrick Henry's going to get the first and second down looks. I like it. I think the Titans are on the on the rise. I, I, uh, I like the Titans' offseason moves. I like... I like the fact that they don't have to be hampered by DeMarco Murray anymore. He's gone. Probably going to be in Seattle, which I think if you're Seattle, it's a good move. Um, but who are you talking about? DeMarco? Mark Murray. DeMarco. In Seattle? Why, yeah. why didn't Malcolm Butler play in the Super Bowl? It's I. There's like 27 different reports. Yeah, it's, Everyone it's has rumors. different answers. There's reports, and then he refutes all of them, and you're like, all right, what the fuck's going on now? I'm like, I don't know. You know, it'll be some shit in like 10 years when he retires. He'll write a book about it and just like throw everybody under the bus. Yeah. He definitely fucks somebody. What? The only way you get benched in the Super Bowl is if you fuck someone's family member, I feel like. All right, so here's the thing. Like what Belichick's if Belichick's cousin's daughter? Okay, <laughs> but, but like, yeah, if it's but what, what if, if it's, that dude Underwood or whatever? He got cut like the day before the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, so that was fucked. A couple years ago, he probably fucked his wife or something. Like that's wild. <laughs> now here's the thing, right? No ring. What kind of player though? Like if say you're Belichick, yeah, right, and I'm an assistant coach, and I come over and I'm like, yo, look, Brady just slept with my wife. What are you gonna do about this day before the Super Bowl? You're going to be like, like oh, fuck your wife. <laughs> yeah, right? You're gonna say, like Malcolm Butler, in the end of the day, was kind of expendable in that situation. Where whatever he did, if it was Gronk doing it or Brady, they're not benching him. Is he expendable, though? I feel like he was like a solid corner for them. Right? <sighs> a lot of people were ripping him throughout the year. Like, he didn't have a great season for his standards. He was used <sighs> differently. Remember, two years ago, one of the one of the things that 
was like pioneered by Bill Belichick was they doubled the number one wide receiver and then they put Malcolm Butler one on one against the number two wide receiver. They didn't do that last year because Stephon Gilmore's arrival. So when when he was put on an island by himself, you kind of saw that he's not the guy that people just were assuming he was because he made one great play in the Super Bowl and had one good year against number twos. I'm glad the Jets didn't get him. The Jets were heavy in on him. Uh, but I think it's a good move for the Titans secondary that needed help. You know, so good move. I, I think it's not. he's not definitely not a shutdown corner. I, I wouldn't put him amongst the top 10 to 15 corners in the league, but he's somewhere in, in between 15 and 30. And you guys like Deion Lewis? Love him. Yeah, Deion Lewis is dope, man. I thought the Giants should have made a run at him. He would have been nice. Because Shane Vereen, you know, he, he got to go just because he's never available. Yeah. And I'm a big Shane Vereen fan, but, you know, your best ability is availability, as they say, and you're just always hurt every other game. Hmm. Deion Lewis has shown the ability, too, to just car- carry the ball as well. Can I ask from a fantasy perspective, though? Doesn't it, like, if you had your eyes on Derrick Henry, doesn't it suck... It's like, you know, finally, they get rid of DeMarco Murray. I'm chilling. I think the Titans I know he's going to get 400 cr- carries. And I then. think the Titans would be crazy not to give De- Derrick Henry the ball three times. Three. Like, uh, like uh, the first three down. Like, first, second, and third down. Third down, too? No. Well, not third down. I'm it's going to be but Henry like, first and second, uh, and then Deion. Yeah. What, what I mean is, like, he has to be the main guy. Like, give him majority of the carries. I think he will be. 100%. He has yeah. to. No, for sure. But when you're going to like Deion Lewis, does it scare me? I hope not. I could see how it could because but I'm he's saying legit. It, it scares you because he's legit, right? Yeah, it's he not. Is a it's legit not like Orleans Dark was is going to be his back. You're like, oh, all right. It's Le'Veon Bell and him, the only bell cows in the league. Is there a better third down back? Alvin Kamara. I mean, I wouldn't really count him honestly. In fa- fantasy wise, though, like you got to look at Alvin Kamara and say, would I pass up on Mark Ingram because of this guy? The answer is no. I don't think I would pass up on Derrick Henry because of Deion Lewis. I think they both play two separate roles. Everyone that has Derrick Henry in like a keeper league, yes, yes. Because of what I just said, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or they're they're fucking. I hope they do that. Hanging themselves because they thought they were gonna have Derrick Henry. Bell nice. cow That's back what in a, in a yeah, run yeah, for I'm, a, I'm in that boat. Yeah, yeah. Um. Also, the last thing I have here, uh, Honey Badger, cut. Mm. J E T E. Yo, I heard some people say that he has he has a baby mama. Is that the is that the official term? The mother of his child lives Todd Bowles' uh, uh, stepdaughter. T- Todd Bowles' stepdaughter is the mother of his child, and yeah. she obviously is Todd Bowles' stepdaughter. <laughs> I, they said that's a good tie to the Jets. I'm I don't know. In my experience, when someone is a baby mama and not a wife, plus baby mama at the same time, you want to be as far away from that person as humanly possible. I also think the ties is with Jamal Adams, LSU, LSU brotherhood. Yeah. And uh, if they bring back Mo Claiborne, that'd be good, too, because I think they were teammates together at the time at LSU. Yo, Honey Badger's dope. It's just that his contract was a little too crazy. Mm. $9 yeah, million he- dollars a year coming off two ACL surgeries, too, and he had a down year last year. Yo, in the NFL, if you have a bad year, it's a wrap for you. It's mm-hmm. huge. You need to legit be... That's like $5 million. <laughs> Yeah, you, you need to be a guy like Aaron Rodgers who's had seven, eight elite years, close to a decade, where if you have one bad year, it's like, ah, you know what, we still know what we got. But when you're a guy where it's you had a good year, you got hurt, you had a good year, got hurt, and then it's that, it yeah. doesn't work. Unless you're Sam Bradford who's made almost $200 million in his career. That guy, whoever his <laughs> agent is, that is unbelievable. He's probably just laughing 24-7. He's probably... T- <laughs> <laughs> He's at home just like he's a fucking idiot <laughs> again. <laughs> you guys didn't learn the last three times this didn't work out. Crazy, yo, crazy, crazy. Good signing for Arizona though. Who else are you gonna sign for Arizona? S- no, that's horrible, dude. Why? Who else you get? Arizona has a very small window right now. They, there is no window. There that is window no has window. been. There, yeah, it's closed. well. Look, it's done. There's a crack open in the window a little bit still. Slam shut. There's a drift. They coming locked through. the top of it. They have the old '80s windows where you have the. You, this, it's always cold in the apartment, no matter what you do. You know, it's that window, but and you definitely, if you have Mike Glennon as your starting quarterback, then fucking put bricks up in front of the window. Right? Isn't Carson Palmer and Sam Bradford the same exact quarterback? Sure, but the same issues that worked for a little while though. Carson Palmer it worked for one year, two years. I don't think I don't think it makes sense. Hmm. They they caught lightning in a bot- bottle on a has been quarterback twice in a row. Kurt Warner and uh, what what's his name? Palmer. Palmer. And now Bradford is a has been oft injured quarterback, just like those guys were. Palmer had Bruce Arians, though. Bruce, Bruce Arians isn't there no more. This is a great point. I, I, I'm not saying it's a great move. I'm not saying the, the Cardinals will contend in any way. 
I'm just saying, out of the quarterback class that was out there, if I'm the Cardinals, I'm taking a shot on. You're on, gonna laugh. I'd Bradford. rather have Josh McCown. I would too. At least I know that. Yeah, his, for sure. His, he could drop back, step <laughs> into the throw, and I know his knee won't blow out. <laughs> but he's not wearing those big work. shoulder pads. I just keep thinking of the shoulder pads. Sam Bradford with the big shits on. And you know that no when he gets injured, no one says anything to him. He'll like, cry. yo, dude, let's let's get let's tighten this up. Yeah, you know what I mean. You don't look cool. Let's make it. Let's make it let's <laughs> Word, make it yo, neat. you don't look cool at all. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Baker, hey. Baker Mayfield wears like kicker fucking <laughs> yeah. pads. Those shits are like stuck to his shoulder. He needs a bandana on. Those are four seven. <laughs> Grabbing his dick. Big fan. <laughs> Not of his dick. Let's move forward. That's what you said.